Welcome to the Human Conversation Podcast with Jules White, the real dragon slayer, author and entrepreneur sales coach. Tune in weekly for human conversation about business and sales. Enjoy business expert interviews, educational episodes, and virtual cuppers with entrepreneur business owners. So grab yourself a cuppa and enjoy. Here is your host, Jules White. So welcome everybody to the Human Conversation. Oh my goodness, I am so excited about this conversation. So I have with me Christian Burns. He is an epic singer, songwriter, um, producer, teacher, uh, and he's a northerner. That's kind of how he asked me to introduce himself. So how are you, Christian? I'm good. I'm really great, Jules. Um, great to be here. Um, and you, I'm, I'm talking to you from um, sunny Wigan, which is raining at the moment. But yeah, I'm great. It's so lovely that we're doing this. We met literally days ago, literally days ago. It feels like I know you and I've known you for years. So that's really, really nice. Um, and I just need to tell the listeners that we met on Clubhouse. Now, you know, everyone's talking about Clubhouse right now. So shall we just get that one out of the way? Let's um, get the elephant in the room. Let's get yeah. it out of the way. And I actually went because I want to, I want to start my own podcast uh, okay. later on in the year. So I went in the podcast room and I, and I said, I was like, hey, everyone, I'm Christian. And uh, I'm, I'm looking to get on some podcasts. Where's the pl- best place to go? And people are like, oh, I'll have you on my podcast. And I think you were there. And I was like, oh, right. Okay. So I just answered my own question there. Yeah, so no. that was where we met. Um, yes. yes, it I was. Know. So that's really interesting, isn't it? Clubhouse. So uh, we won't talk about it for very, very long, but it's this new up and coming audio app, which um, is this new social media platform. Everybody's trying to get on there. Not everyone can, only in the, if you've got an iPhone. Um, so yeah. there's a big FOMO been created around it, which is really fascinating. And as I say, I wrote a blog yesterday literally about it. I, um, I feel actually that for you guys, musically, I think uh, Clubhouse is going to be amazing. What do you think? I, I know I agree. I think, you know, already, you know, there's, there's, I, I've been in there and there's, there's a lot of help on there for musicians. There's, there's a lot of advice on there. And there's a lot of great people on there who are who are helping with you know uh, problems. I mean, I've been on there helping people who get in creators, you know, writers block, and you know, giving advice on lyric writing and stuff like that. So it's a really great place to kind of go and get some help, really, if you're if you're at the beginning of your journey, or even if you're you know not at the beginning of your journey. It's just a great community, and I, I think it's going to be really big. I mean, I think it, the powerful thing about it is you know there's no video, there's no um, text. There's no photographs. It's just audio, yeah. you know. So I think it's a, it's a powerful platform, and um, I think it's it's, exa- it's exciting where this will go. It's so, very uh, exciting, and you and I have <laughs> met because of Clubhouse, and that's the yeah. most important thing right now. So I want to talk about everything. However, we won't have time to do that. I want to start <laughs> at the beginning. So look, I introduced you as a singer songwriter and all the other bits. Ultimately, you have an amazing voice because I've been listening to your music. I love your music. Um, Thank you very much. I do. It's, it's super. Where did this start for you? Because there must be lots of people out there who love music. My son, for instance, wants to have a career in it. Where does it all start, Christian? Well, well I mean, for me personally, it started, my dad was a musician. My mum and dad, um, you know, so growing up, I was surrounded by music. You know, my dad was always playing guitar, rehearsing with his band in the house. And, you know, I was just surrounded by it. Um, and all these great bands like ELO and the Beatles were a huge influence on me. And my dad actually um, was signed to Decca Records in the 60s. And he got signed, Dick Rowe it was. He was the famous guy who turned down the Beatles and said, oh, no, these, these skittle bands are over or whatever. So anyway, he signed my dad's band and my dad, actually ended up he played the cavern with the Beatles you know when the same opened up for the Beatles and it was it was crazy you know and so it's just been in my kind of blood I guess and uh, then I, I, I've always loved music you know I used to like the Eagles and the ELO and all these great bands and then when I was um, 13 I started my first band at school with some friends and you know we used to play Beatles songs so it's just it was a continuation from that really and then I didn't really start, start taking it seriously till like I was I got you know 
I got a proper job and I was, I, I used to sell cars. I used to sell houses. I did door to door sales for a, for a year and did stuff like that. <laughs> I did, yeah, I did all kinds of stuff. And then I met some guys and we started having a band for like, it was like a hobby really, you know, it was, we, we were going to do something with it. And then we decided to say, you know, let, let's do, let's do something properly with this. Let's try and write some songs and let's try and get a record deal. So I had this plan in my head and, and uh, the band was BB Mac and you know we we uh, we went down to London and we bussed outside record companies and um, you know I went down with a briefcase and we, I borrowed my dad's suit and his guitar and we all went down to London and we stayed on my mate's couch and, and on the floor and everything in his flat and we went down we bussed outside record companies and we, we you know we were trying to get attention we didn't have the internet then we didn't have anything so we just went around the record companies and busked and we got moved by security from Virgin. The police came and moved us because we were like, you know, we were determined. And one one record company um, let us through the door, said, hey, guys, that was really good, actually. Come in. And that was it. That was the beginning. You know, we, we, we started, we, and to cut a long story short, you know, word got around that these three guys from up north were going around London busking. And there was a massive bidding war. And uh, we ended up signing to um, Telstar Records back in 1998. Yeah, we got licensed out to uh, Hollywood Records, which is Disney, basically. And then, you know, we went on to, you know, record our first album uh, in America, um, you know, uh, with Rob Cavallo, an amazing producer who's done, you know, the Goo Goo Dolls and, you know, My Chemical Romance and Green Day. And he produced the album with us that we wrote. and. We went on to have a you know, number one song for 12 weeks in America. We, we sold over 3 million albums. And yeah, that was, that was it. This was like, you know, and to the 2000s, you know, around that time. So I've been doing it a long time, you know, and um, I feel blessed to be doing something I love every single day. Yeah, it's, it's been a journey. It's been, a, it, listen, it's been a roller coaster of emotions, you know. It's been, there's been some hard times, some good times. But, you know, ultimately, I'm here now and I get up every day. I make music. Um, you know, or I'm teaching music and it's just, it's just my passion, you know, so I feel lucky um, that I get to do what I love every day. I think I can totally hear how passionate you are about it, which is so lovely. I think you're right in that, you know, it is absolutely not easy. I'm not sure what really is easy in life if we're really, really honest, but the music journey um, is really not an easy one and back when you were starting as you say you were having to pitch to record labels you know you yeah. couldn't just stick your iPhone on and pitch up on TikTok could you Christian you know? no but there weren't any streaming services or like DistroKid or Spotify or anything like this it was like the only way you could you could get your music out was by getting a record deal and the only way you could record music was to go in a proper studio you know they didn't they didn't have home studios and you know laptops with you know logic pro and all it was, it was nothing so no. it was it was different different time different world you know very different and like i guess it would be really nice to explore that with you as to how you feel young musicians or new musicians now you know what's that difference in terms of what you went through as a journey and what they they can now do pros and cons yeah, I mean, I think there's there are definitely pros and cons. I mean, you know, one thing that you you have got now is social media and the power of social media. You know, that's the window to the world. You know, you can actually cut out, you know, PR people. You can cut out radio stations and TV shows. You know, the only way to get your, your message out or your song out back then was to be featuring in big magazines, be on top of the pops, you know, be doing this TV show. But now... You know, you can do like things on social media and you can reach millions of people, you know. So it's very exciting time, actually. And, and I think even more so in the past couple of years, there's been advances and there's things you can do now to kind of give, give yourself the chance to be heard, you know. And I, and I am a big believer that if you've got great stuff, you know, the cream does rise to the top. Take, I mean, you can't just release something and put it out and go, that's great. People will come. No, no, no. But you can get it out to people, you can push it, you know, and doing things like this and, you know, podcasts and, you know, all kinds of, you know, uh, social media campaigns and content, you know, content and being consistent with your content, YouTube channels, there's so much you can do. 
and there's, there's so much content you can create it's easier to make a music video now you don't have to have a crew with the helicopter and you know you can get a, for iphone i've done music videos in the past few years i've done music videos on an iphone with a gimbal you know what i mean so it's it's incredible the amount of um of ways you can express yourself creatively now as well as you know with with technology um but i think it, it's a very different time but it's a very exciting time you know it's a very exciting time i think there's a lot of changes need to be done to the royalty payments that you know streaming services pay artists it's not fair and that side of the industry is a little bit broken but people are making a lot of noise in parliament now and stuff so i'm sure you know in the coming uh, near future that things will change but um yeah i mean i i think it's a very exciting t time to be into music and then the one thing is you know when i started there wasn't any youtube there wasn't anything there was no knowledge so you didn't know how to record so you couldn't do it now there's software and there's there's there's, there's courses online there's tutorials on youtube free stuff even on youtube you can go and figure out how to write a song or what you know there's there's all kinds of options and support for artists so it is an exciting time you know it is but i think it's it, you know come what comes with that is the fact that it's saturated then because more people can as you say more people can be there but the cream rises to the top and i like that you said that there is a lot of noise uh jules absolutely but there are things you can do to make yourself stand out from the crowd you know and there's things that you know you don't just want to it's no good having writing this thing and then going on once a week um, with a picture of you um, sat on a wall looking like this uh, on your social media. It's not going to be engaging enough. You know, people need to be on there and people need to get into your personality, you know. And if you use social media in the right way, it, it does work, you know. People like people, you know, and we all love that human connection, no pun intended. So it's all about doing it properly and doing social media properly and everything else properly. And it does work. So... Yeah, I think, I think, you know, people get overwhelmed with social media. There is a lot of people out on there, you know. Everyone's trying to do the latest TikTok dance and all that. But <laughs> apart from all these, these novelty things, I think just actually just talking to people on social media and, and being yourself and being your authentic self, like Clubhouse, yeah. you know. The Clubhouse is so powerful because there is no filters on your face and there is no this and, you know, it's just all about, the voice and there's nowhere to hide you know it's just the real you there's yeah. no scripts you know it's just being yourself being your vulnerable self at times but being authentic and people will will connect with you you know people will so i think i think you know it, it it's overwhelming the amount of people out there that are on social media i'm releasing songs you know but i, I think again i go back to just just doing it correctly and, and having the right strategy really yeah yeah, to, yeah. to get people's attention very, very good advice. Um, so I want to talk about you. I want to talk about your music. So yeah. why did you choose the genre of music that you are involved in? And actually, what is that? Tell us about that, Christian. Well, I, I you know, <clears throat> BB Mac is uh, a pop, you know, it's pop music. And I've been doing that since 2000, you know, till 97. And we took a break, like 2003, you know, we took a break. We were so exhausted mentally and physically we were you know it was really hard and we took a break for a few years and then i was writing away and trying to rediscover my sound and and what i wanted to do moving forward and i was doing this kind of rock songs with synthesizers a bit like the killers kind of stuff you know and i was just messing around with this different experiments and i put some songs on myspace when myspace first came out if you remember that yeah and uh a DJ called Tiesto, who is one of the biggest DJs in the world. Yes. Um, he contacted me himself on, uh, on MySpace and texted me and said, Hey, hey, Christian, I like your song you've got in your MySpace. Can I use it for my album? And I was like, no, <laughs> it's mine for my album. And I was like, no way, mate. It's a bit cheeky. And I was like, right, OK. So I left that. And then I got, a, I got something through the door. And it was a DVD from, the rec from Tiesto's record company. And it was a Tiesto a DVD in concert. And I put it on and it was like, oh, wow, he's quite big, isn't he? And it was like him in a stadium in this DJ booth. And I've never seen anything like it as far as an electronic, D you know, a DJ with, you know, 50,000 people in an arena. I was like, wow, this guy is the real deal. So I got back in touch with him, funnily, funnily enough. I said, hey, mate, it's Christian again. So listen, this is what I'll do. I'm not, I'm not going to give you that song because it is mine and it's for my album. 
But what I will do, I'll write a song with you. I'll write a song with you because I think it's amazing what you're doing. And I'll write a song with you for your album. Um, and he said, great. So we, we wrote a song called In the Dark. And, you know, since then, I mean, that song went on to be number one in many countries. And it opened up the doors to me in the electronic dance community and world. And, you know, I went on then to, to work with, you know, some, some of the, the biggest names, you know, like, you know, uh, Armin van Buren and Benny Benassi, Paul Oakenfold. I, I mean, I've worked with Chicane and, uh, I mean, so many to, to list, but I, it opened the doors to me and I had, I've had a lot of success doing, you know, trance. There was a lot of trance music. Um, but now I've kind of progressed and my sound is, maybe it's because I'm getting older, it's mellowing out a little bit. And it's kind of, I'm going into the more of the deep, kind of deeper, deep house kind of um, genre now. So the new stuff I've got and the new album I've got coming is a little bit more Ibiza, chill vibe. Um, it's still got a nice beat to it, but it's a little bit more uh, calm. Um, but it's what, it's, it's, it's like, I feel, I feel like I finally found my sound, you know, because yeah. um, uh, it's took me years to get there, but I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm writing these songs now and I'm in love with these songs and I just feel like I've got so much more of that to share now. So I've got an album coming out. We've not set a release date yet, but I think it's going to be sometime uh, in this first quarter. So probably end of March, say, um, April time. And it's called Love Songs from Suburbia. And, um, you know, I've just, I've released a few songs from it. So there's a song called Alive. And there's a song called Truth. And I've got a new song coming out in a, in a month called Tigers. And yeah, I'm just feel, I just feel I've found something magical here um, with combination of, of the, the, the instruments and, and my vocal treatments. So I've been playing around with that. And yeah, and I'm, and I'm excited to share it to the world. I'm getting great reaction to it as well, which is really nice. Um, to put something out and then people are really connecting with it so yeah, yeah. I love it I, I'm listening I'm watching I'm following you now it's absolutely my type of music um, I'm a bit older than you but I think that um, we, we sort of come from a similar kind of time if you like and for me uh, my first trip to Ibiza was when I was about 45 would you believe um, you know I left it that long but I I stayed at Ushuaia which you'll know yeah. um, and I just had <laughs> the most fabulous time not because I got drunk or, or any of those other things but actually because of the music that was what was magic for me about Ibiza and so I totally resonate with what you've just talked about yeah no I, I love Ibiza you know I've done I've been there performed there many times but I've stayed at Ushuaia I made the mistake actually of staying there for 12 nights in Ushuaia and after I think after it was like a week I was I was literally on the balcony and they were going shut up John, it was a party every every night, and I was like, it got too much for me in the end. I was like, I yeah. shouldn't have stayed here <laughs> for twelve nights to my friend Christian, but I did. Um, but you le you live and you learn. But yeah, Ibiza, you know, I hold it close to my heart. It's it's an amazing place, and uh, yeah, I, I can't wait until we can all travel again and oh, go no. and do stuff like that. that that's on the top of my list. I'm going to be in Ibiza. Yeah. I'm going to go back there just to chill out. And, you know. Totally, I agree. Um, so you've obviously told us lovely stories about the whole journey, where it started, about your dad. Um, I lost my dad in 2015. And so, I, you know, he was my absolute hero and rock. And so anyone who talks about dads always makes me feel a little bit nice, you know. Um, yeah. so it's, it's really lovely you had that musical connection. You're still writing, you're still producing music. Amazing. Do you think you would just produce music? music till you can't basically absolutely i'm never retiring i mean I, it's funny because my dad i taught my dad over the past 10 years how to use logic and now my dad's 75 now Love and it. he uses logic and I, I was on the i was on a zoom with him the other day we were doing songwriting lessons and i was teaching him about some other new plugins and reverbs so my dad is it's killing it he's like producing his own albums He's like putting stuff out and it's, it's amazing. So, you know, I, I, I will never stop because it's not, it's not a job for me. Do you know what I mean? That's why I feel so lucky, you know, people say, you know, find, find something, find a job that you, that you love doing and you'll never have to work a day again. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's not work for me. I love it. So I will definitely be, be writing music and recording music till Till, till, till you can't, can't anymore. Till you can't anymore. Yeah. I love that. We talked about uh, the teacher bit, and I just want to bring that in a bit, Christian, to the conversation. Because 
I want to know more about what that is. What does that look like? So if you're coming into that space, tell us about that. Yeah, well, it's something new for me. And I, 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 um, I launched something um, last, well, in December last year. Um, and it's called Record Ready Vocals. And, and basically, it's a course that will, it's an online course that teaches people, it's to empower artists, really, because it's something, I know a lot of people are stuck at home. And, you know, musicians have always relied on, oh, I've got to go to this studio and, you know, hire this studio, go to the studio and record my vocals and then send it off to this producer. Or I've got to use this guy and he comes round to mine and he helps record it and then he edits it and he tunes my vocals and does all this. And people can't get out at the moment. People can't get to studios. And, you know, it started off, I was teaching some of the guys out of my band, like how to do vocals, like, because we couldn't get together. And I was thought, this, I just thought more of it. You know, I thought there's something more in this. So anyway, I put this whole course together and it's to empower artists to, you know, take control of your career and be able to produce your own vocals to an absolute professional standard where you can release them on a record, hence record ready. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I started it and, uh, oh my, I mean, I've just been blown away because I, I, I launched, I, it took me so long and it's literally 20 years of knowledge that everything, all these amazing producers like Rob Cavallo and, you know, um, Alan Sides and all these amazing producers and engineers I've worked with over the trust 20 years and I, when I used to go in the studio I would sit there and watch them and I'd make notes you know I was lucky because I thought there's no I, I need to make the most of this opportunity so it's all that knowledge and plus my own methods and tricks um, that I've put into a, an online course it's 42 lessons about vocal production from start to finish so I go through like mic choice and how to set up because the thing is as well I've had to set up recording booths and studios on the road on yeah. buses yeah. in the hotel rooms I'd be like well Christian we need this vocal I'm like well I can't get to my studio I'm in Japan at the moment but I've got a duvet here and I've got a couple of mic stands and I'm going to make a little tent in my hotel room and put this mattress up against the wall and I'm going to record oh, I, this is the stuff I've actually done so it's all that kind of stuff really and it's really it, it's amazing because it, you can don't have to have a studio so it, it helps you just do the, the whole thing from start to finish. And I've just moved, the, the course is closed at the moment because I've took my first students through and I wanted to make sure they're incubated through the course properly and they understand everything. And I'm at the point now where I'm just getting the testimonials off them. Yeah. And it's, I'm like getting emotional because it's, it's a lot of work for me. But to see that it actually works and the mm. results I'm getting and they're getting is incredible. And I realized the feeling I'm getting when they're like overjoyed and like Christian, this has changed everything and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, it's the same feeling I would get on stage performing in front of 50,000 people. It's the same buzz and I've been missing it because of lockdown. So it's really, really lit a fire inside me, you know, and it's amazing. So I'm getting to help a lot of artists. Um, I'm working on my second one, which is record ready songs at the moment, which is a songwriting one. Um, and it's just a whole new area I've moved in. It's entrepreneurial um, kind of sector I've moved into because I'm doing this myself. And, you know, even the, the website and everything, I've done everything myself and it's been a monumental task, but it's been so rewarding for me. So I'm just really excited to take this even further now. And uh, I've got some really amazing plans for this year. And me and my good friend, uh, Brian Transo, BT, who's like one BT. of the godfathers of Trump. I yeah, follow BT, him not now. British Telecom. No, I follow um, him now on Instagram and he's, he's yeah, bad. Well, he's one of my dearest and closest friends. And, you know, we were in a, we're, we, we have a band together called All Hail the Silence as well. You know, we, we released our first album in 2019. And, you know, we're, gonna, we're working on something really special to help a lot of electronic musicians this year as well. So uh, more about that, you know, in the coming months. But it's just been, it's been so great for me. You know, A, it's given me something to really focus on while I'm in lockdown. So I'm not going crazy, you know. And, um, and yeah, and it's just, it's just great to feel like I'm, I'm helping these, you know, these musicians and giving them the skill set that will last them a lifetime, you know. It's, um, it's an amazing feeling uh, in, that, in that space because it's what I do in sales is, is just, you know, support and help people to see how they can do things. And that, when that <coughs> feedback comes, Christian... It's like nothing else, is it? You know. You know what, Jules? I did not expect it. I didn't expect it. I, I, 
I thought, oh, oh, I'll enjoy that part of it when if I get good results. But I was also like, oh, I hope people get results. You know, I, I'm doing, <laughs> I've just built this course. I thought I put my system down and my methods, and it works for me. And I take things for granted. I've been doing it a long time. I take things for granted, but it's, people have been getting amazing results, and I'm like, I didn't expect that feeling it gave me, and it's just really spurred me on to do more and more of it now. Yeah. And, and, and the great thing is, you know, I do the music as well. And then I'm teaching the music and I'm, it's all my passion, you know, it's all the same thing. So yeah. it's a win-win for me. You it's know, brilliant. And, and... But there's nothing like being taught by people who have walked the walk, Christian. There's no doubt about it in my mind. So I love all of this stuff you're talking about. It's so cool. I'm going to make sure all the links are in this podcast as well. So everybody can connect with you in every way that you want, you know, so don't worry. Oh, about fantastic. That. Yeah, that, yeah, that's great. Thank yeah. you. So, so I want to just kind of, I suppose I want to, bring the conversation to a close. Well, actually, I don't want to do that, Christian. I want to talk to you all day. Um, <laughs> but I, I kind of want to just um, bring it to a really nice place as, as we end our conversation for the podcast. But I, I'm curious as to you song, write, and you sing. Do you actually play any instruments as well, Christian? Yes, I do. I've played guitar for like, you know, 30 odd years. That was my instrument. <clears throat> um, so I play guitar, but the funny thing is now I write 99% of my songs on the piano and I can't play the piano. So work that one out. But you and I have had a conversation about my son. Sorry to mention him again, but no, it's, no, he's carry the on. same. You know, he, he has never had a piano lesson and yet plays the piano beautifully, you know? How does that yeah. even happen? I know. I mean, he, he, I think Sam really plays the piano properly. I think he's really great as well, you know. Um, but I, I found tools and software that I can help express myself. And it's not cheating because I still have to pick the chords, but it's just an extension of my expression. Yeah. Um, and I won't go, I could talk about this for <laughs> hours and how AI is going to change the whole creative process and not to be like it's us against them think of like AI as, as the best co-writer you've ever had and, you're like, and we could have another 10 hour conversation oh, me you and BT could talk about this like. well, well you know maybe that's <clears throat> what we should do maybe we should do another podcast episode with BT so that we can talk about that because I think that's so so fascinating yeah it's fascinating and it, the thing is you know everyone's got Alexa in the homes now you know everyone's got AI and no one really realizes how far they are ahead with the technology you know but it's it's coming it's in fact it's here so you know, I, I go through, I do a whole section of my course, Record Ready Songs, about using AI as a co-writer. Um, it, it's not you press one button and it writes a song for you. Not at all. It still needs that human connection. It's incredible. And I've found ways to express myself because I've, I've been playing guitar for 35 years. I've, you know, I'd like to say, uh, yeah, I am a great guitarist, you know, but I found other ways to express myself. And I feel and I, I really feel strongly that when I'm writing a song, Having a keyboard and a piano, you know, a MIDI interface on the computer, you know, I can change that instrument sound, just press a button, change the sound of the instrument. And that is inspiring to me. That ignites inspiration. Yeah. It can change the whole mood of the song I'm writing. So to be able to use that as an extension of my expression is, is, is powerful stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just love music and I love music technology. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just obsessed with it. Bit of a geek yeah. like that. But, yeah. you know, there's, there's lots of things. And I think I just want to open people's minds up to, to other ways of, of using technology as a massive bonus, as a massive extension of skill sets. The same way we can all speak every language in the world now using Google Translate. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's the same kind of thing. You know, don't, don't be scared of the robots be friends with the robots. Yeah, yeah, I love that. That's a great message, isn't it? And, you know, it's, we're all so different. There's this Booper campaign that they ran where they said there are 7 billion types of normal on the planet. How amazing is that phrase when you start to think about how unique we all are as individuals? This is that big yeah. thing I always talk about, Christian. And it's the same with music. Everybody will listen to music in a slightly different way. They'll hear different things. They'll feel different emotions. And the AI aspect you've just mentioned is just enhancing every element of how we connect, isn't it? Don't, don't you think? No, absolutely. Spot on. It's it's it's. It's weaved into more software and websites and services that you actually realise, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And, you know, Alexa being a perfect example. And it's only getting better and better. We're going to see this hockey stick effect happening as more supercomputers are being invented now and they're being used 
you know, technology is advancing at a, 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 you know, a really, really fast rate. So I think, you know, we're not far away from flying cars and all that stuff. <laughs> you know, Elon Musk sending all his, uh, his uh, satellites up into the sky. Yeah. And, you know, there's stuff going on and it's, I think it's exciting. It is exciting, And, uh, you know, really. we just got to see see where it goes we have so just to finish um because i always have a little bit where i kind of want to leave the listener with your final thoughts and and words and inspiration and um, there'll be people listening who love music there'll be people listening like me who have got maybe children who want to go into music careers there may be people like me who even want to start singing because they've been singing all their life and they've never been able to do it you know can you imagine all the types of people who have listened to us chatting what is your final words and, and inspiration for them christian I, w- I would say you know don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today and if you have that urge do it because there are tools there's knowledge out there that can make it very easy for you to do whatever you want to do you know in music and just you know be open to learning and just you know just, just go for it. I, I, I would say, you know, you, I never want to be one of those people who's like, oh, I should have done this. I wanted to do that. Just do it. It's, it's, it's a new time we're living in and it's a time of opportunity. So I think if you are thinking about doing something in music, just go for it, you know? Thank you. And that's the door. <laughs> and that's the doorbell. <laughs> the timing is perfect. Christian, thank you for, for chatting. I knew I would love chatting to you. I absolutely knew I would. And I know we'll do a second episode, if you will, because I... Any time, let me fantastic, know. Fantastic, it's, fantastic. It's been, it's been, Jules, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, honestly. thank you so much. And we will put all your links in. And listeners, wow, what an amazing episode with fabulous Christian. And you know what? This is the real stuff. This is a human conversation. This is what it's about. If you love music, you have to follow this guy. And if you've got anyone who wants to learn more about music, I think this is also the place to come to speak to Christian. So thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please like and subscribe on the platform you listen to. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and you can see our beautiful faces on YouTube because this is also recorded for there. Thanks for joining us and see you next time on The Human Conversation. Ta-ta for now. You've just been listening to The Human Conversation podcast with Jules White. To find out more about the other work that Jules does, please visit her website, www.liveitloveitsellit.co.uk. And if you enjoyed the podcast, then please do leave a rating and review on the platform you use to enjoy her show. Thanks for listening and see you next time.